the blog work revolution. That's more or less what's in the book about now. So, uh, over to you. Thanks, uh, Good morning. Uh, I'm I've been working on evolution for about, I think, more than 12 years or so. And I work for Intel. I didn't want to hide my email, but it's too long that it ran out of space. So, so I emphasized it. <laughs> Uh, so, um, for at least for the last couple of years, uh, uh, my full time job is called evolution. I've been doing it uh, free time. So, I just want to talk about what happened, uh, you know, what I've been doing the uh, time. And before that, I just want to give a, a small introduction about uh, the architecture of evolution you know, uh, before evolution to our goal. That was in line with below to and not wrong. So this was the architecture. It was one single monolithic shell. So uh, there was, I mean, there's no public library which people could depend upon. If you want to launch something, you really have to use a start evolution as a command line, and then you would be able to do something. It had a lot of interesting data. You have pin stuff, which you know, desktop, desktop, the desktop can use it. For example, the clock applet, uh, the clock integration, send, not less send. Through. So there were so many other ideas that came up. So people thought that you know, uh, we we'll split it up and let uh, the rest of the desktop use the evolution as a service. So um, this was the this is the current architecture and. It was, uh, if I'm not wrong, this was redesigned around uh, 2003 or 2004, my memory is bad, but uh, so uh, what happened was uh, the single monolithic shell was split as uh, uh, calendars, contacts and tasks as a, uh, a service on the desktop. So this is what we use as EDS today. And May was still stuck onto the shell because uh, one, the there were not many use cases. Second, uh, you know, the performance, the, the IPC at that point of time was not, uh, you know, was not very, uh, let's say, that not very good to have mail as a service. So there were some other uh, performance issues and uh, use cases. They, they thought that, you know, let mail be stick with uh, evolution. So uh, it was like this, I mean, uh, until about uh, 2012, and uh, I mean, I started uh, doing something with free time, which is something like this. I had a presentation in Bruno where I talked about uh, email as a service, and then I said, you know, how email as a service changes, uh, you know, plenty of things uh, for evolution. So uh, this is the proposed architecture. Some part of this is part of the evolution stream, and you know, uh, some smaller bits are you know, separately as a repository. Uh, so the evolution main was split into uh, multiple libraries. So the shell has a core dependency on libcaml. So this uh, mainly focuses about uh, uh, you know how uh, the main services. So uh, so this is what was done about uh, a couple of years back. Uh, so libcaml, so that's the uh, email library. Uh, so I split that into camel and you know, I mean libcaml, libcaml data server, which abstracts you from all the providers that you could write exchange. I think there are about four or five exchange connectors today. I mean, what the active things that was working on, and then there's uh, EWS, uh, few more, and GroupWise. There was a Gmail connector also. I'm not sure if that's still alive. So. Otherwise, this kind of time up open SMTP. So these are camel providers. So it exposes standard interface which you can access over IPC as a service. So there also there's also email factory that actually runs uh, evolution as an engine where you know it keeps checking for mails if there is some uh, push notification, some debus messages if it passes on the bus, so that your know, most of your evolution would run as a service. So uh, could launch the GUI which will just talk to this daemon and then you know it'll just show you what is actually has been fetched. So which means the UI is supposed to be very lightweight. So that part of the work is still not done. 
and it's not something that is uh, doable in a free time and it takes much more efforts to you know, uh, migrate evolution to uh, directly use the uh, main engine. So this was, uh, uh, you know, I had talked about this in Bruno Vodek and ever since then I've been working on, uh, you know, um, some other interesting stuff. So yeah, about the car. Uh, so before I talk about, you know, what the evolution can do about the car, let's, let me talk about if you want to, uh, you know, uh, try uh, uh, or uh, what are the challenges that comes with uh, you know if you're uh, if you're uh, you know uh, doing an app for the car? First, most of the cases there won't be any wired or wireless connectivity. You you cannot access the internet and yeah, I mean there are some concepts of connected cars and some other ways to get uh, uh, you know internet on the car. But for most of the cases, let's assume there's going to be no uh, you know Wi-Fi or uh, you know. 3G or something like that. Second, someone who's, who's driving the car is not going to be very interested in reading your old emails or uh, something like that. So, which, which means that what what is more interesting to the user is what is the newest messages. 99% of the time, at times, people might want to uh, you know do a lookup of your old mails, but then you know they have the phones or computers for that. So, the best case is that you, know, you just want to present your new messages to the user. And third, it should be really non-distracting. So something that you know the app, if we do, it has to be concerned about that. And fourth point is the keys are very limited. When I'm driving the car, I think the most important buttons I probably would have on my steering is like up right, left down, and then okay and escape. So if you can if you can do a, uh, an interface around that and if you could let the user read emails, I think that would be awesome. Last but not least, you cannot ask a user, I mean, the, I mean, the driver a question, like, you know, is this a, I mean, something like, uh, uh, we are trying three times, do you really want to connect? A question like that doesn't make sense when someone's driving the car. So, I'm sure there are many such questions which, you know, you would ask in a typical application, you just can't ask the user when, you know, um, when he's in the car. So there are far more important things that he has to do. So these are the challenges and you know the typical use cases. And so if you, if you don't have wireless, then how is it that you know are you going to read mails? So Bluetooth is your friend. So what what the typical case is something like this. So I I carry my mobile into the car. So the car has a Bluetooth, I mean an IBA engine which has Bluetooth 95% of the cases. It'll sync my phone uh, via Bluetooth. I mean, it connect to connect to my phone through Bluetooth. So that becomes your, you know, connectivity to access mails. It will show you mails uh, directly from your phone. So how does it do that? Uh, so uh, Bluetooth has many profiles. So I'm sure that most of us, like the A2DP profile, which we use for uh, Bluetooth, uh, you know, music, you know, uh, like to hear stereo sounds and, you know, uh, next forward control. So similar to that, there's a profile that has been there for the last few years. It's called a map profile. So uh, this profile defines a specification about uh, how each account on the phone is being exposed to, uh, you know, on the Bluetooth so that, you know, an external application can connect and fetch messages and show to the user. So the map specification is there uh, for some time and uh, you know I implemented some parts of uh, the map specification on the, the kind of blue stack and uh, some parts were done by you know uh, the other people in the community. So more or less the, uh, the, uh, the implementation of map protocol on the blue stack is complete. I mean if you want to take a few bucks because there are not many real, uh, real life scenarios I mean real life implementations today so it's going to take some some years to stabilize, uh, and what what actually I had done was uh, I was thinking about the Camel map provider. So I mean, I was thinking about the Camel provider architecture. So you can write a provider for Camel which can connect to Bluetooth. So that's what this Camel map provider. So it's it, it is in GitHub today in my private repository in, in my repository which is public, of course. Um, the camel map provider allows you to connect uh, uh, through 
Bluetooth to your phone and it will sync your emails, SMS and MMS. So I haven't tested MMS because I don't have a MMS service, at least I don't have one in India. But emails and uh, SMS can connect from your phone to, uh, to the Camel engine. And uh, it supports uh, platform specific implementation. So when I mean by platform specific implementation, this blue, uh, the map protocol implementation by every phone uh, provider, it is different today. I don't know why. For example, uh, uh, if, I, if I connect to my iPhone, uh, it won't give me the old messages. So when I say get, uh, get, get me all the messages uh, in, in my inbox, it will just give me either empty if there is no new messages or you know uh, if something comes in, in, in that time, I get new messages. If I do an Android, uh, uh, every time, the first time I connect, it gives me all the messages, then onwards it's only the new messages I would get. If I take Blackberry, every time I ask for messages, it'll give me the complete list and I have to filter out and find out what is the new one. So every provider has a different, I mean every phone manufacturer has a different understanding of how map should be and then they have a, uh, uh, their own implementation. So uh, the Camel map providers is brilliant enough to understand at least uh, iOS, Android, and uh, uh, Android and BlackBerry. But you know, when I say iOS, I mean when I say Android, it also includes uh, uh, Cyanogen mod. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, so apart from that, platform specific implementation, there's also micro a small test suite that I run just to make sure that I don't break what I had uh, built on. Uh, so it actually, uh, it's a, it, it'll just connect your phone, it gets a couple of messages, and then uh, it uh, it tries to uh, you know, set the read flag, it tries to delete a message, and then it does some, some uh, small tests like that. And yeah, what are the challenges in the development? Uh, first and foremost, there is no reference implementation, which means that uh, uh, it's virtually done by me for the first time, so I couldn't just look at anywhere. So the only, uh, only idea I had about this work was a YouTube video between, uh, I think, BMW and uh, BlackBerry. So there was literally no no other uh, reference implementations or uh, you know idea about how this feature should look like. And right now, uh, uh, even today, iPhone doesn't support uh, emails uh, on the map, so it doesn't expose your email accounts or or the uh, map profile. The same goes to Android also, but uh, BlackBerry supports it, has been supporting it for the last past few years, and then Sierra mod also supports uh, uh, email, so if you have a OnePlus one on getting a two, so it'll, it'll, you can read your emails through this, uh, through this map provider also. And uh, yeah, I was saying this was the same thing. So Android, iOS, Windows, each of them have their own implementation of the I mean, map protocol and nothing is common between them. So every single operation, there are deep three different ways I have to handle uh, depending upon which phone I'm connecting to. And no, the, la the last one is it's, yeah, Bluetooth is very slow. You can't expect uh, to download a, a huge attachment on Bluetooth. It probably makes sense to pick up the phone and see the attachment of the phone then to download with the ablution. Uh, what are the features it supports? Uh, uh, it supports multiple accounts. So if you, in a phone, if you have, let's say, it, it, by default, you should have one account for uh, SMS, one for MMS. If you have an email account, you'll have uh, one, two, three, four, five. I mean, how many email accounts it supports? It also supports multiple phones. Blues had a limitation, I think that's fixed. Uh, so you can have multiple phones connected and then multiple accounts. So all these, as and when you bring your phone here to the computer, if you have a camera map provider built for ablution, it actually, your ablution starts showing the accounts and you could just uh, read your text messages, you know, right from the ablution. And uh, yeah, it supports stretching message lists and messages separately. So which means that uh, uh, I'm just reading you know, the, the camel map provider will first fetch the summary, which is going to be very fast, and then only when you want to read it to a separate mess, I mean, individual message, it goes in and fetches. And the Android, I was going to, it supports fetching, MMS and SMS, it doesn't support sending because uh, 
uh, you know, iOS doesn't, I mean, iOS and Android doesn't expose the outbox via the map profile, so I can't. Blackberry and Sierra Gemmod, they support both fetching and sending email and SMS, as of course MMS is not tested. And it supports uh, push notifications, so the moment uh, uh, you get a, a new mail on the phone, I mean, uh, the moment you get new mail on the phone, uh, you should get, you know, evolution should uh, uh, you know, pick it up automatically. Uh, but uh, I don't uh, have a demo of that right now, so thanks to uh, Emirates uh, who messed up my luggage, I couldn't actually show a demo. But uh, I, I, I have a bit old uh, video, I thought I would at least play that up. I hate to you know, play a video and uh, be silent, uh, but at least I thought uh, you know, seeing it uh, is much better than just me explaining uh, the feature. I hope it's visible. Should I switch to full screen? People at the back, is it visible? Yeah. So this, this is a, a vision account setup, so yeah. So you set the server type as a map and you discover uh, uh, the devices around you. Uh, it has a, a new plugin, but I think it's, I mean, I haven't uh, maintained it in the last few months, so which means that uh, it needs a bit of porting since e plugin is outdated in evolution. So it lists you uh, the list of accounts. So SMS numbers is one account, and CMIME actually means that it's an email account. So it gets the folder list first. Yeah, so that's my folder list on my Blackberry. So it starts fetching the uh, emails. I'm trying to mark a mail as red and, and red. So it is instantaneous between the phone and the, uh, uh, the evolution client. Delete also. Yeah, so I deleted a mail and it could actually, yeah, Blackberry scrolls uh, to the bottom of the messages. I think I can come back. Yeah, so, so as a, it, it, it is actually synchronous. So, So this, this demo doesn't have the push notification because a little after this I, uh, I added the push notification. So this is about, yeah, I think a year old demo or something. So I actually want to answer so the main thing. So we do a center scene, we actually see the main thing fetched. Factory that I was talking about, it's also hosted there. Uh, that's the uh, uh, mail server part of it. Uh, so if you see what's, uh, yeah, I think I think I've it done. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to.
I I understand the question. The question is if there are multiple So, uh, so this this is just the uh, uh, the backend part of it. But if you do an app, the the one I had like the V plugin, it shows you the device names on the screen. Oh yeah, of course. The first setup has to be manual. So once you are uh, connected to the car, the next thing you don't have to do. You just walk into the car, it'll automatically sync everything. If I'm understanding the question, so okay, so uh, if you're asking that uh, for all people have synced up to the car, so yeah, probably if everybody is connected to the car, you could like you have multiple accounts. So the way you can email one, it likely have more accounts. And the app that we have to do for the car has to have an interface where you actually separately uh, read out individual accounts. Yes, uh, uh, I, I, they just talk about one account, and trust me, they don't talk so much about uh, how or you know what they want to do with multiple forms. So they just talk about how the integration should be. It's a, it's a nice video by the way, the, the BlackBerry and uh, BMW videos. It actually explains uh, how you can just get into the car, and then you, it has a the, the the app they used in the BMW. It actually is a Text to speech, so as and when the messages come, you know, you hear Thomas Peter, you will see the email from uh, blah blah blah. You want to read out, you press OK, it actually starts reading or dictating the mails, and you can actually reply from there. And it has a microphone which has uh, you know speech to text in it, so it actually can reply it just while driving. It's pretty so. So, this 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 just the back end part of it. So, if there's an app and we do that along with all these things, it will be very awesome. Thank you for listening to me.